also, when we were there doing doing our Europe trip, um, we went to Paris and we lived in the gay and Jewish district. I'm not kidding you. There's a district in Paris that is like the gay and Jew district. I mean, talk about like just ripe for offensive jokes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but I'll spare you. I won't. Uh, because that's not the point. I don't like to offend people. And if I do offend you, then have grace on me because I'm not perfect. But anyway, Paris. I really loved Paris. And I don't know why people are like, oh, everybody's rude in Paris. Yeah, I'm sure with every country, there are certain areas that where you go where people are pretty darn rude. Uh, you can pretty much say that about every city. Or, I'm sorry, country. Um, but the experiences that I had there were very, very nice. Uh, I, I'd almost wager to say that Italy probably had more rude people. Uh, he didn't stamp my passport when we went from Italy into Switzerland. I was really mad. I was like, come on, man. I'm trying to put stamps on my passport here. Could you stamp it? And he just kind of went mm, and said something that Mario would say. Uh, yeah, that's offensive right there. Yeah, stereotyping. But anyway... France. We went to so many beautiful pieces of art there. We went to the Louvre. Such a cool place. So inspiring. We went to um, Rodin's um, you know, exhibits there. You, you know who, who Rodin is? Uh, he's the guy who does the thinker like this. And one of my favorite statues ever. He, he did a lot of very grotesque artwork. Kind of like... A, like a gargoyle, so to speak. Really cool, awesome art. Oh, boy. Oh, but the greatest piece of art I have ever seen in my life. And I'm not going to say the Mona Lisa because, frankly, I think it's too small. It's like it's like this big. It's tiny. Did you know that? It's tiny. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but my top two favorite pieces of artwork. One is the Sistine Chapel, uh, specifically Judgment Day. I don't know if that's what the portrait is called, but it is the coolest piece of art ever. Michelangelo painted this thing, and on one side is is people uh, basically going to hell, and then on the other side are people going to heaven. Now, you may think, that's not a very uplifting piece of art, Bo. Why do you think this is cool? Because there's so much going on. So cool. And there's Jesus in the middle, and he's basically doing this pose like, Hold the phone, guys. There's way too much going on in this painting. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Look look it up. Uh, yeah, uh, Michelangelo's Judgment. So neat. Uh, and one of the people in the painting is Michelangelo himself. And you can see him. He has this chisel in his hand. And then, and then in the other hand, he has like this skin, almost as if um, it's snake skin that, you know how a snake peels it off and they slough it off and then they have shiny new skin underneath? It looks like that. And he's taking this old skin off and he's holding it there. Um, but what's interesting is he's on sort of the hell side of the painting. And he's kind of like, like motioning to Jesus, like, so you're the final judge. W where do you think I'm going here? Man, talk about such humility there. Wow, 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 wow. But it's sad also. If you're a Christian, you should 100% know that you're going to heaven. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're going to heaven, even if you continue to sin, because Jesus is that powerful. Uh, hopefully you don't want to sin because you're transformed. But if you do make mistakes, when you do make mistakes, don't worry. You're going to heaven. You can't lose your salvation. That's biblical. That's not me. That's biblical. Straight from the Bible. So anyway... Um, Judgment Day, so cool. And what I did when I was in the Sistine Chapel, I'm so happy I did this. I'm going to toot my own horn here for a moment. I took a picture in there, and you're not supposed to take pictures. How, how bad of me. Bad tourist. Bad. But I took a picture of the one thing that no one is able to describe. The floor of the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> Because you walk in there and you're just sort of prodded through like cattle and they're trying to keep people moving through and everybody's instantly just like this. No one's looking at the nice tile work down below. 
And I can't remember what exactly it was. It was something like blue and, and it was kind of boring. So of course you wouldn't look at the floor, but I took a picture of the floor of the Sistine Chapel. I was so happy about that. Oh man. And then some tourist over there would try to take a picture of the ceiling and then some guard would start screaming and yelling at them. <laughs> Cause that's what church is all about. The Sistine Chapel. Wow. We went to, uh, wow, we saw the Leaning Tower of Pisa. We saw such cool, oh, yeah, so much history there. I could talk forever about that, but I won't. Instead, I'm going to mention my second favorite piece of artwork of all time. So the first one was Sistine Chapel. A lot of stuff there, a lot of different paintings going on. I could talk a long time about that, but I won't. Because the second piece that's my favorite, the David statue, Michelangelo's David Wow, so cool. Uh, wait, or am I getting it mixed up? Da Vinci. Did Da Vinci do the Sistine Chapel? Ah, oh, dang it. Oh, man, oh, I'm losing my history. Now I'm, I'm also getting it mixed up with Raphael, too. <laughs> Thanks, Ninja Turtles. But Raphael did some paintings around, around St. Petersburg also. They did, he, or he did. Matter of fact, Raphael went down the hall to check out what Michelangelo was doing in the Sistine Chapel, and he was so blown away by, by the skill that Michelangelo put into it. Because Michelangelo was a carver. Uh, I mean, he cut things out of marble and stone and rock and everything. He wasn't the painter, so he wasn't supposed to be very good at what he was doing. But when Raphael walked into the Sistine Chapel and saw the work in progress, he went, wow. And he immediately went back to his own painting. And you will see this if you go into um, uh, the Vatican. Um, there is, wait, by the way, did I call it St. Petersburg? St. Peter, that, that's in Russia. Dang it, see, I'm getting all my history mixed up. But Raphael painted Michelangelo into his own painting. Isn't that awesome? Because he thought he is one of the great artists in history. I have to force him into this painting. And, and so you'll walk into this room and you'll see all these famous figures that Raphael painted. And there's this one person who's kind of out of place. The perspective is sort of off. It sort of looks like he's floating on top of everybody else. That's because he was an afterthought and he forced this figure, Michelangelo, into his painting. Isn't that so cool? So the David statue. Uh, our professor there, uh, 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 Dr. Bard, Baird, Bard, Soren Baird. His son was Soren. Nice guy, really nice guy. But the professor was so cool because he said, I'd like you guys to spend 30 to 40 minutes looking at the David statue. Now, before all of you are like, oh, 30 minutes staring at a naked guy, you get over the nakedness really fast because this statue is awesome. First thing that blew me away about this, seeing this firsthand, was its height. It's huge. Second thing is, his head is not quite proportionate to the rest of the body. And that's because Michelangelo originally was commissioned by this king to cut the David out and, and put him up on this column in this square above everybody else. So when you looked at it from down below, he wanted it to look, you know, instead of this tiny little head and big, big feet, he made the head slightly bigger. So that as you looked at it from down below, it looked more normal. Isn't that brilliant? And this guy cut this thing out of like a solid piece of marble. Imagine that. Wow. The detail, that's another thing that's just so cool about it. Um, you can see his veins popping out on his arm as he's kind of holding his sling. You can see the texture in the leaves down below. Unbelievable statue. And someday when I show my kids the David statue, because that's a dream, I want to show them it someday, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say, Lucy, or however many kids we have in the future, I want you to stare at this thing for 30 or 40 minutes, let's say 45, just to make it really uncomfortable. Because after five minutes, you get really bored. You're like, okay, let's go on. Let's move at, move on, look at the uh, Egyptian sarcophagus down the hall. I mean, it's a mummy, that's awesome. But no, he forced us to just sit there with a pad and, and um, a pencil and just make notes about our observations about this one piece of art. And it is so profound. Uh, in 45 minutes, I still wasn't done writing down everything 
about this thing. Uh, and you just walk around and, and take a look at it. It's incredible. So cool. So Michelangelo, so neat, so neat. Uh, anyway, I love art. I really do. It's very inspiring. And uh, I also like The Thinker. It's very, very cool. Um, there's also The Gates of Hell by Rodin, and that's really eerie also. Wow. Uh, so when you have a chance, go out and expose yourself to this stuff. Not on the internet, not on Google Images, but firsthand, and just force yourself to stand there and look at these things. So cool. I love it. So anyway, that's the artistic side of me.